If you're looking for something to keep together with your Asian small cloud others, Planet Zoo got a lot of ideas but they missed out on the one I'm going for today. It's about time we get some progress done in Kenobi Gardens with a habitat suiting the name. Here I'm building some small platforms to attach to these aqualia trees, or however you say that. These platforms end up looking kind of similar to the one used for the Siamangs, but made for a smaller animal, the red panda. Because they're the animal that will share the habitat with Asian small cloud otters in the enclosure I'm making today. A mix you can find example of in real life and that is what matters to me. If they do well together in franchise mode, I got no clue, but you could give it a try. I'm playing in sandbox myself, so it's all good. These aqualia trees have become my go-to tree when I need a kind of cultivated tree in this park. It comes from around Southeast Asia, but from what I've been able to read online, they have been cultivated in Northern Australia and over time turned into their own breed here. If you can find them in zoos in real life, I don't know, but they feel like a good option for a non-native tree in this park. For older and more natural looking trees, I use some of the Australian species. So I like to have some trees that look like they've been planted by humans and some which ended up here by themselves. I also use the aqualia for the crown on my treetop structures. What we're building here is a climbing structure for the pandas, which is reaching out over the guests and up to a platform you can see from the treetop adventure. I always end up building stuff like this for red pandas, but I've gotten better at it over time. Maybe I should try to find some of my old builds for them someday and see how I managed over time. I think I got like 4 saved maps with them in. But since this is Kenobi Gardens, I like to make the climbing animals in this park quite noticeable and therefore reaching out of the enclosures. And it really brings this whole area to life. And if you want to see how I continue Kenobi Gardens after today's build, then make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay updated. When I started this park, I wasn't sure how thematic I would make my areas. The area out in the front is a bit mixed where you'll see some of the animals that doesn't strongly fit in elsewhere. I've added some stuff there lately, but we'll look at that another day. Then we got this area here where we're building now, which leads up to the treetop adventure. The treetop adventure will focus on Southeast Asian animals. So now I have ended up going with Asian animals down here in front of it as well. Though in this area you'll also find some of the species which fit in with both Australia and Asia like the saltwater crocodiles. That is how it is for now at least. Then we'll probably make this transition into the Australian area. I also got at least one more thematic area planned but I'll not talk about that today. So while I have made some small additions to the park off camera, I think I from now on will try to turn most of my habitat builds into speed build videos like this one. That will probably make it easier to keep track of the progress going forward. While it might look straightforward here on camera, getting both the underwater view and the climbing structures to work as intended was tricky. I've never tried to implement both these features into one habitat before, so a lot of these adjustments are cut out of the video. And I still have issues with the others only using one side of the pool for diving and the pandas ending up in a box in one part of the climbing structure. But I guess that's the old ongoing issue with climbing animals in this game. Most of the work on the back of the enclosure is left out of the video. This part is probably going to be changed later so I didn't do too much with it besides from cover it with some foliage. There is a bit of empty space behind it I need to find some use for so when I do that I might build a bit into that side of the habitat. So I didn't want to make a big deal out of it now. The big green building behind the enclosure is also mostly just an empty undetailed shell at the moment. I'll fix that when I feel motivated for it. That is going to be the American reptile house you can also see behind the alligators. But I don't think I'm going to finish that anytime soon. This is actually the first time I use the others, even though I see them as a very useful species. The best carnivore species to be added last year if you ask me. They're just very flexible. Good for small zoos, good for big zoos, good on their own, good for various kinds of mixed species area like this one. They're just really easy to find use of. It also seems like the additions of the Lark Gibbons in the tropical pack has given them some new life lately. It doesn't look like I'm the only one building fodders these days on YouTube. I had them planned for this zoo from the start since they are actually also pretty common in zoos in Australia from what I have been looking at. But exactly how I wanted to implement them in this zoo I wasn't sure about from the start. My first plan was to house 
system with the Siamangs, which is also part of the reason there is a water area below the climbing area they got. And that small bamboo hut you might have spotted over there was also first intended to be a shelter for the others. But the way I ended up building the habitat for the Siamangs didn't give me much reason to mix something with them. And the pool also didn't end up looking like something for this species of other. Therefore I ended up going with the crocodile for that pool instead. Sooner or later I'll also add the bench wrong to this park, which probably is no surprise if you've seen the logo of the zoo. I was considering letting the others live with them, but I think the bench wrong will mostly just be visible from the treetop bridges. So that would also not be ideal. And when the Lagebans showed up in the tropical pack, I did of course also consider that option. But since I was quite convinced I wanted to have the red panda somewhere down here, I thought it was a good idea to include the others in it too. Since I felt like implementing some water down here would add something more organic looking to all the buildings and structures you'll see in this area. And as mentioned, this is a mix you can find in real life. I know it from at least a couple of zoos in the Netherlands. The ranges in the wild do also overlap in some areas, so it got some educational value too. I lost a bit of recording at the end of the video, so it stops a bit suddenly while putting up nesting baskets for the red pandas. But after the speed build finish, we'll take a look at the whole enclosure. And after building those baskets, there wasn't really that much more to the build itself. I still need to make a nest in box for the others, but I think I'll wait till I'm sure how the back wall of the enclosure is finished. Otherwise, I believe it shouldn't be necessary with other types of indoor areas for these guys in this climate. I also feel like I might have to make the walls around the whole enclosure taller, even though I left it like this for now. It looks like it might not be quite tall enough to keep others in. I just fear it won't look very good if I do so, so maybe I'll consider other options instead, like putting some wire around the whole edge of the wall, even though that might be annoying to do, or maybe see if I can make the water surface a bit lower, but I'm not really sure if that is possible. So I'm probably going to play around with a solution for this at some point. Educational signs are also something I still need to get fixed for all the animals, so they'll remain blank for now. I want to make custom ones, but I also don't want it to be too time consuming. So I'll see how I do that the best way and then go back and make signs for all the animals in the park when I know how to do that the best way. Now that this video is out, I'll concentrate on getting my treetop tutorial finished. I know I mentioned it several times already, but since it is a tutorial, I don't want to rush it too much. I have done most of the recording work for it, but there's still a lot of editing to do. So sometimes it's nice to just work on another video for a while and then I end up finishing that before the tutorial. That has happened a couple of times already. But I do hope it will be the next video I get up on the channel, but I cannot promise something else won't distract me before I get that far. But it really would be nice to have it out before we run into a new DLC news cycle, which crazy enough is only like a month or less away I guess, before we start to hear something about it. And I feel like I have barely touched the tropical items yet. Thank you for stopping by Kenobi Gardens today and I hope I'll see you around here again another time. If you like the build then don't forget to like the video to help it reach out to more people. And now for some nice views of the enclosure you have just seen being built.